Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It's been a while since I come to my print room to do a video, but I have been asked several times, should I buy a Pro 1000 from Canon or a Sure Color P900 or 700 from Epson? Yeah, all three printers are excellent. This one may be replaced next year. Those are just rumors, folks. And Apparently, according to the rumors, there's going to be some improvements to this printer, which I have no clue what they may be. I don't want to really speculate at this point, but they may be sort of major. So you may consider waiting to choose a similar type of printer, meaning 17-inch capacity versus an Epson P900, for instance. So let's talk about why you would want to choose. Let's assume that nothing is going to happen and this printer will continue to be sold next year. And who knows when a new version of the Pro 1000 may be available. So right now we are dealing with a printer that contains 12 channels. The printhead itself also contains 12 channels. So that is 12 cartridges one of which is chroma optimizer which comes into play to even out all slight differences in gloss that you may encounter yes that does exist even on the top of the line Epson printers you will see a little bit of gloss differential depending what colors are used the most magenta seems to be the biggest culprit at least in the third party world Magenta seems to be a lot less glossy than other colors in whatever the palette of your printer happens to be. Assuming we're talking about pigment inks, of course. So the gloss optimizer, say on an Epson printer or the chroma optimizer on a Canon printer, turns tends to even out that slight differences that you may see on certain papers. So that's that, you know, that's that's kind of a plus for this family of printers. Some of the older Epson printers like the P400 contain gloss optimizer. Also the early versions like the R2000, R1900 also contain that. They knew that they needed to do something to even out the gloss because people were really tending to print a lot on glossy papers and luster papers. And that's when you get to see those differences in gloss. Okay, Often your border will be less glossy than the actual print or vice versa. It depends. Now. Why would I choose this over the P900, for instance? Well, it depends. If you use only OEM inks and you pay, then either one will serve you perfectly well. The beauty about the P900 is that you can buy a roll adapter for it, although it is not cheap. It's at least $250 for it, but it will allow you to load 17 inch wide rolls up to 50, 100 feet, depending on the thickness of the paper. Okay, that will determine the you know the maximum length of that roll. This printer does not have that capability. Will it be available on a future model? We don't know. Okay, so again, if you're using only OEM ink, then either printer will serve you well. But here's the kicker: if you ever even think of using third-party products. Forget about the P900. It's just not going to work for you unless you live in Europe. Those European versions of those printers are not locked, but the US-based printers, P900, P700, are indeed locked. The same occurred with the P800, and it took about a year and a half, almost two years for it to be licked, if you will, where we can either use a chipless firmware or a chip decoder board, which requires internal installation and messing around with the uh, cables connecting to the motherboard not for the faint of heart okay I got it done even with my fat fingers but it was not really a very straightforward process but anyway so there we go that's that's the choices that you have to uh, make either printer absolutely beautiful outputs 
Now, let's let's talk about the P900 series, 900, 700. They have 10 colors now and a new, brand new 10 channel printhead. What does that mean? No more black ink switch valve. That was the worst thing that the earlier products had, like the P800, the 3880, and all those other printers out there, the 48. 100, 4880, 50, 6400, all of those, they had a black ink switch valve, which because people were afraid to use it, they really didn't use it often enough, meaning they didn't switch from media type often enough, and so the valve would eventually fail and would get stuck, you would have ink leaks everywhere, yeah, or it just simply would not switch over to one of the other blacks, and usually it was the photo black that would fail. So no longer an issue. The 700, the 900, they have a 10 channel printhead and they have 10 colors. They have the same color palette as say a P800, that's the normal ultra-chrome K3 ink set. That means all your yellow, magenta, light magenta, cyan, light cyan, grays, in this case, two grays, violet, which is very important because it allows you to reproduce those very, very difficult blue colors, blues, purples, indigos, all of those colors are impossible to reproduce correctly with simply magenta and cyan. You just cannot do it. So they introduce violet, okay? Now, you also have matte black and you have glossy photo black. And that is not being shared. They have their own channel. So that is a huge plus for this new family of printers. New meaning they've been around for like a year so far. So again, consider that if you're an Epson guy and you want to, or gal, and if you want to stick with Epson, be aware that those new printers do no longer have a silly blacking switch valve, which eventually would fail. And 10 channels now, instead of just basically eight. Remember, you had an eight channel printed and nine colors. Okay, so you were always sharing that black ink, those two black inks. Now, let's talk about this one. So, price for the 900, I believe it goes for 1300 something, 1350. That's the retail price. You might find it for less, of course. Plus a roll adapter that puts it at about 250 for the roll adapter. So, you know, figure that out. Now, there's, before I get to talking about this, there is a, a, a really worrisome thing about the P900. When you purchase it new and you set it up, your cartridges are blocked purposely so that they only have half the maximum capacity they would normally come with. They are rated for 50 milliliters, but you only get 25 on your setup cartridges and most of that goes into the priming process, the ink lines, the dampers in your printhead assembly and the printhead itself needs to be completely flushed with ink. So by the time you're done doing that and you run your nozzle check and your head alignment and a couple of big prints, that said, you gotta buy a new ink set. That will set you back about, I think they're like $45 each. 44.90 something on Epson right now. So, you know, keep that in mind. The same thing happens with the P700. And those are even half the capacity of those for the P900. Imagine that. Now, physically, they look identical. They do. And they have half the capacity. That means the internal compartment is walled off and that bag is smaller. Okay? Yeah. And again, the same racket, they give you only half the load. And hopefully, you know, you will have a second set ready at the waiting because you're going to need it pretty soon. After the excitement wears off, all of a sudden you need to spend, you know, a good amount of money for inks. Now, let's talk about this one. So this one comes with 12 80 milliliter cartridges from the very beginning. 80 loaded into these. You will use up about half of it to prime your printhead. Yes. So about 40 ml of ink is used to fill the internal compartments, the ink lines, the printhead dampers, and I've seen them. I've taken apart a, a printhead of one of my Pro Ones, and I know there's 12 dampers in there, 
and then expel all the air out of the lines and the printhead itself to the point where it produces a perfect nozzle check. You're scared to death because you think where the hell did all that ink go? Well, it's inside the printer. Some of it went, of course, already into your maintenance cartridges. So yeah, that's what you pay. That's what you pay for. So the next time you reload, and they, that might be several months into the future because you still have 40 ml as opposed to very little ink left because they gave you half of it from the very beginning. Okay, so yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent printers, but I don't like what they do with the initial ink cartridges. They only give you half. All right, so you load this up, you're printing happily, and then say you choose to use OEM, $60 each, okay, times 12. If you hit the lottery, okay, and you also, the stars are aligned properly, you may run out of ink on all 12 of them. One of them is Chrome Optimizer, but you know what I mean. All 12 of them go empty, $700. That's what it takes to fill it back up with OEM cartridges. Now, unlike the P900, I keep pointing that way because that's the P800, but similar, unlike the P900, you got to replace it with OEM cartridges. There's no option whatsoever here in the U.S., in fact, in probably North America as a whole. In Europe, you can buy third-party cartridges that you can refill with whomever provides you with good third-party inks for it. Not so here. So if you live here, consider that when you make that choice. With this one, again, you're not supposed to refill it either, but we have come up with many ways to circumvent that little block, if you will. That little roadblock. Okay? So I'm not going to get into that right now. I have a multitude of videos on the process of refilling, ink level sensor system, all of this stuff has already been covered and it's on a playlist by itself. So take a look at that and hopefully if this eventually gets replaced, we'll still be able to do what we are doing. Meaning the cartridges can be drilled, a plug is inserted which then allows you to remove it, top it off with ink, load 80 milliliters of ink in there. If you choose to use single-use chips, you can do that as well. See see what I mean? But it's just an extra expense. The single-use chips will run you about $12, $13 a piece. So, you know, that's better than $60, I suppose. And ink to fill this will run you possibly $14 to $15. So, you know, that's like $30 max to refill a cartridge. It's still a little bit costly to use, but it's not impossible to at least cut your costs in half. Now, <clears throat> in the case of my printer, you may be seeing what the heck is all the stuff here. Well, these are level sensors that sense when a cartridge is down to about 20%, meaning about 20 ml of ink in the case of the way I have these calibrated. So recently one of them just went off here and went on here. So that's the way it works. The sensor goes off, the light comes on, and it matches a corresponding slot. So if the sensor is on, these lights will be off. Simple as that. It's an either or. If they are both on or both off, there's a malfunctioning sensor. Okay? That's what that means. All right. So. Hopefully this kind of clears up the, the, you know, how to choose. And again, it depends on what your plans are in the future. Both of them have 17 inch capacity. The Epson will give you the ability to print with roll, which might be a huge, you know, selling point for you. But again, it blocks you from using third party inks. And you get, even with a full cartridge, 50 ml, you get 80 here, okay? so. That might be one of the um, selling points, if you will. Now, this one has proprietary red ink and proprietary blue ink, which is a huge plus. Because not only does it cover that blue realm, but also the red realm. But remember, these colors have to be composited. Blues are composited with cyan and magenta. Oranges, light orange yellows, reddish yellows, all of this stuff, all the way to yellow and into magenta are made with yellow and magenta. They are intermixed. So if you have a proprietary red ink, 
you don't have to really work so hard to produce an accurate red color. The same thing with the blues. Your ocean views will be majestic. Okay, not so with the P800 as it is now, but will be the case with the P900. It has violet ink, which is very similar to blue. Okay, it's used in the same manner for mixing and compositing those very difficult colors. All right, many other physical factors that you can look into and uh, I hope you just go ahead and do your research yourself and, and find out what fits your, your build better, okay? So that's it for now. So thank you so much. Keep on supporting the channel, please. Thank you. Um, we'll be back this weekend. I will have a guest. So we'll see you then. And hopefully everyone will have a happy printing experience. Bye-bye, everybody.